there we go. And you put your pack in backwards, and you're like, why didn't that turn on? Because you turned it off, because <laughs> it's backwards. All right, let me get myself situated here. It's first day back, you know, first Sunday back after vacation. I'm already falling apart. Welcome. <laughs> Whether you are here with us in person this morning or joining us from home, we are very glad you are here with us today. And for those of you who are here in person, please feel free to join us after the service for a coffee hour in our fellowship hall. And before I forget and I get into our announcements, I want to put her on the spot and thank Judy for Monday and the, yes. Yes, we are Eclipse event for those of you that are currently going, what the heck happened Monday? Um, so we hosted an Eclipse event. Everything was spearheaded and organized by Judy, and it went really well. And you're right, the energy in the building was just, it was a great day for those of us that were here, whether you were working, you baked cookies, or you stopped in. Um, oh, we raised about $2,200, so that's nice. It's all about community. All right, so now on to our announcements. There will be no Tai Chi tomorrow afternoon. Betsy is out of town. Choir will be practicing Wednesday night at 6.30 here in the sanctuary. Yoga will be meeting Thursday morning at 9.30 in Fellowship Hall. The session will be meeting today at 11.30 over in the office. Fellowship Circle will be meeting tomorrow at 1 in Fellowship Hall. Our weekly Bible study will start back up next Tuesday, so not a couple days from now, but next week, and that will be at 4 in the office and on Zoom, and we'll be looking at the three synoptic Gospels, so Matthew, Luke, and Mark, the three Gospels that pull from each other and are the most similar, and we'll be looking at those through the book A Three-Dimensional Jesus by C. Clifton Black. If you would like to participate, but purchasing the book is maybe holding you back, please see me, and we'll figure something out. There will be no reading for the first class. So if you want to just stop in and kind of see what it might be all about, there's no reading for the first one. We will be serving communion this morning. So if you are worshiping with us from home, you'll want to make sure you have your elements nearby. And then finally, going back to the Eclipse for a moment, I did see on social media that the library will be accepting Eclipse glasses. Um, as you probably have seen, that there are many places that are collecting the glasses to be sent off to other parts of the world that will be experiencing an eclipse later this year. So it's a chance to send glasses off to people. Um, and I did see the library is a collection spot. So if you want to drop them off there, or um, if you can't get there during library hours, but you can get to the church while the church is open, you can also drop them off to me because uh, trust me, I am at that library at least once a week, picking books up or returning them. <laughs> They're probably sick of me by now. <laughs> Are there any other announcements this morning? Then let us take a moment to gather ourselves and center our hearts and our minds for this morning's worship. Please rise, embody your spirit, and join me in our responsive call to worship. The Lord hears us when we call. Come, Come let, let us put our trust in God. The Lord fills our hearts with gladness. Come, Come let, let us sing God's praises with shouts of joy. The Lord grants peace to, to our weary souls. Come, let us rest by the quiet waters of God's grace. 
Our opening hymn this morning is number 115, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain, both verses. Somebody's all set for children's time. So now it's the time for our youth, our youth at heart. Anyone who would like to come forward for a little bit of a children's Bible story. And this is to let our youngest members know that they are just as welcome in this space and in this congregation as any of our grown-ups. I know it's not Dr. Seuss. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> No, nothing I do will be as good. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> We're stuck with the Bible story today. So how's everybody doing? You good? And how about you kids at home? You can come a little closer to your screen. So we have a Bible story to read today. And we're reading a version of this story later in the service but it's going to tie in, I think, a little bit. It's about a guy named Thomas. Yeah, and we call him Doubting Thomas. So the disciples were hiding in a house the night Jesus rose from the dead. They were afraid. Bam! They locked all the doors. Then Jesus came and stood by them. Peace be with you, he said. The disciples looked up in surprise. Jesus showed them his hands and his sides so that they would know it was him. And the disciples were very happy. Again, Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. God has sent me to you. Now it's your turn to go tell the rest of the world about me. Jesus breathed on them in a very special way. He said, With this breath, I will always be in your hearts even when I am in heaven. You now have the power to do the things I've asked you to do. Thomas was the only disciple not there that night. When he got back, the others excitedly told him about Jesus' visit. And I'm going to show this for our kids at home. We got Thomas here looking a little unhappy and not really believing what everyone else is telling him. I mean, would you? somebody you knew had died and then all your friends saw him and said no but we saw him and he was here and you didn't get to see him I wouldn't believe him I would look like Thomas yeah right I don't believe you Thomas said I'll believe when I can touch Jesus wounds a week later Thomas and the other disciples were in the same house Jesus came again and stood with them peace be with you he said to them Thomas, Jesus commanded, come here, give me your hands, put your finger on the wounds in my hand, 
put your hand by the wound in my side. Do not doubt anymore. It's time for you to believe. Thomas' eyes popped. My Lord and my God, he exclaimed. Jesus answered him, you believe because I'm here with you and you've seen me. (laughs) Think of those who have not seen me but believe in me anyway. You should believe even when you cannot see it for yourself. So we see in our story today that I I don't have to preach the sermon today. Great. Yeah, you're going to preach for me? Perfect. Perfect. So all our disciples, these friends of Jesus, were afraid. And so have you ever been afraid? You want to sit right here? I can move over. Oh, maybe. Okay, there we go. You love construction sites? They're pretty cool places. Yeah, so sometimes we can be afraid, like the disciples, or we're not sure what to believe, like Thomas. But we can remember that Jesus is with us, even when we're scared, even when we're not sure if we believe something that Jesus is with us, and he can help us, and he can love us even when we're scared. And that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah. No, this is not a book about construction site vehicles. I don't think they had any construction site vehicle. They had construction sites back in Jesus' time, but I don't think they had any vehicles. Not like we think of today, right? All the big bulldozers and cranes. So let's say a quick prayer. Dear God, when we are scared, when we are unsure, when we doubt, we ask you to remind us that Jesus is with us even when we feel all those big and some scary feelings that we can be comforted and feel better knowing that Jesus and you are with us and that we carry your love in our hearts. Amen. Amen. To repent is to turn away from sin and turn toward Christ Jesus. Scripture promises that when we confess, God hears our cries and wipes away our sin. Trusting in God's promise of new life, let us rise in body or spirit and confess our sins and the sin of this world. Risen Christ, we are often troubled by our doubts, but you are not troubled by them. You do not require perfect understanding. Instead, you reveal yourself to us again and again that we might come to know you. Forgive us when our doubts keep us stuck, when fear prevents us from loving all creations as you call us to do. Help us to accept the peace you so graciously offer to us. Have mercy on us when we hoard or hide it, when we fail to offer it to others. Renew us and make us whole, that in this world of strife we may be bearers of your peace. In resurrection hope we pray. Amen. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children, children of God. And that is what we are. Children of God, we are claimed by God, forgiven of our sins, and set free for love. Alleluia. Amen.
B to 48, the New Living Translation. <laughs> Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. But the whole world was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened, he asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands, look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Trust me and make sure that I am not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I do. As he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Still, they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. Then he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it as they watched. Then he said, When I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said, Yes, it was written long ago, that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnessing of all these things. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to breathe with me in and out. To set the scene for today's scripture, we need to take it back a little to the start of chapter 24. It is the first day of the week, and the women have arrived at the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. Instead of Jesus, they found the tomb empty. And then two men in dazzling clothes appeared to tell them that Jesus had risen. So they returned to the eleven and all the rest, told them what they had seen, and nobody believed them. Except maybe Peter. He got up and ran to the tomb, although it's unclear if he believed and just wanted to see for himself or if he wanted to confirm the story of the women and didn't believe until he saw the empty tomb with his own eyes. <clears throat> then we are told that on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. And on the road there, they met a stranger. <coughs> Excuse me. As he appeared to be the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days, they told him all about Jesus and what had happened to him. And when they arrived at Emmaus, they invited him to share a meal with them. When the stranger broke the bread, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. It was Jesus who then immediately vanished once they realized it was him. That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, which is when they found the eleven and told them about this encounter. And that leads up to the start of our reading today. So, this visitation by Jesus is happening on Easter Sunday. The disciples are still, still reeling from the crucifixion. They are likely just trying to lay low, not draw attention to themselves, wondering if they might be arrested next. While still processing their grief, 
The women who had been traveling with them showed up with this unbelievable story about an empty tomb. And some time later, two other followers show up and share their story about their conversation and meal with someone they claim is Jesus. So imagine the conversations that are probably happening at this point. Who to believe? What to believe? If they should believe? What happens now? What does this mean? Well, remember how he said, and then, Jesus is there. Now, sometimes I picture Jesus arriving with a large puff of smoke, like a reappearing magician and a ma magic act. Ta-da! But maybe it was more subtle than that. I can also picture Jesus sitting in a chair, arms crossed, a little smirk on his face, as he silently waits for everyone to notice he's there. And then he stands, <clears throat> clears his throat, and speaks, peace be with you. Can he be heard over the conversations, or does he have to say, peace be with you, several times? Who sees or hears him first? And is Peter in a corner somewhere saying to himself, I knew it? Are the two followers who met him on the road gesturing and saying, see, I told you? We're only told about the ones who were startled and terrified. Perhaps for good reason, as it is likely that they are the most relatable. Who wouldn't be startled and terrified at seeing someone they thought was dead, standing in the room with them, saying to touch them because they are not a ghost, but alive. This is Jesus, but not Jesus. He is the same, but different. It is quite literally unbelievable. And yet, here he is. So let's take a moment and envision ourselves as one of the disciples in that room. It's a little hard to do for many reasons, one of which is the fact that we know all about the resurrected Jesus. And perhaps it isn't so terrifying for us to think about him not being dead. Well, let's pretend for a moment that we don't know all that that we haven't grown up as Christians following a risen Christ. Instead, we followed a very much alive human being named Jesus, a living, breathing, walking, talking, eating, laughing, crying person who just a couple days ago had been killed. A person who is now once again standing in front of us when there was absolutely no expectation that he would ever do so again. When would you start to believe? I have a little exercise for us to do. We were talking, Marlene, about not moving enough. We're going to move this morning. You all seem so excited. So it's going to require those of us who are able to get up and move. We'll take a minute to think about when we, as one of those disciples in that room, would have believed that Jesus was risen from the dead, alive once more, resurrected. Would you have believed when the women came and told you about the empty tomb? Would it have been when the Emmaus followers returned with their story? Would it be here? when Jesus was standing in front of you, inviting you to touch his hands and feet. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand and move if you are able. If you think you would have believed as soon as the women showed up, you'll stand over here. If you think you would have believed after being told about the Emmaus incident, you'll stand here in the middle. And if you think you wouldn't have believed until you saw him in front of you, you'll stand over here. And there's no judgment, by the way. No end is better than any other. It's just, it's a spectrum. 
Now, if you think you would be somewhere in between any of those situations, like, well, maybe not quite the women at the tomb, but maybe a little before the Emmaus, you can just kind of hang out, you know, in between either any of those areas. If you're not sure, or you think it would be later, after you had thought about everything and processed it, you can join me up here. And if you're not able to move around this morning, please feel free to stay in your seat, and maybe you can just let me know where you would be. And for those worshiping at home, feel free to comment where you would be, or maybe move, even move around in your space and join the group that you would be with. Okay? Let's go. All right. <laughs> Judy, where do you think you would be? Just, you don't know. Just right there? All right. Bob? Come here, Mitchell. Wow. I don't know, Vicki, if you want to, like, pan around so we can see. <laughs> So does anyone want to share why they picked where they ended up? You don't have to. I'm just curious. Yes. I am a visual person. Visual person. So I have to see things. See to understand. See to understand, yeah. <laughs> we got a skeptic. Mm, people believe what they want to believe. People, yeah. 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 All right. How many of us just got our exercise for the day? <laughs> yes. I believe that faith is something you can't feel or touch. You have to feel it, and that's why All right, over here, because faith is not something you can see or touch. You just have to feel it. And it's also about trust. Trust. Mm, trusting the women. Yes, my feminist heart loves that. Trust the women. <laughs> and again, no wrong answer. There is no wrong answer. Um, thank you. You can all sit back down. So for myself, as you're finding your seats again, I would love to think that as soon as the women showed up, I'd be over here. I would have been like, yes, Jesus, risen. Yes, I got it. I believe. But realistically, I'm somewhere between needing him in front of me and needing to mull things over and analyze and process and overthink before I could believe. And even then, there may be a tiny voice saying, well, what if? While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. As human beings, we rarely feel one thing at a time. We are complex creatures, and our feelings are also complex, as is our faith. Now, as we read through the verses for today, there is no specific mention of the 11 finally believing. We're told that Jesus opened their minds to understand scripture and that they were witnesses. But nowhere does Luke tell us, and so they believed. Maybe we're supposed to infer it, to understand that when Jesus ate the fish, they believed. And maybe some did, and maybe some didn't. They probably all wanted to believe, and maybe that was enough. Jesus knew these men really well. They had seen each other at their best and at their worst and in every moment in between. Jesus knew which ones would believe immediately and which ones would take a little more time need a little more convincing. 
And throughout that Easter Sunday, he appeared to all of them, regardless. As one commentator puts it, Jesus meets them where they are. Then he encourages them to move beyond where they are. There is room for all of us in this thing we call faith. Every level of faith and doubt is welcome. Jesus didn't judge anyone for how quickly or how slowly they believed in, the re in his resurrection, for how scared they may have been, for how much they may have doubted. He stood before them in all their fear, joy, disbelief, and wondering, in all their believing without seeing, and believing by touching his wounded and scarred hands and feet. And he told each and every one of them that they would be touched by the Holy Spirit, that they were worthy. And it's no different for us today. Chances are pretty good that we won't be confronted with a literal empty tomb, that we won't find ourselves sharing a meal with someone who reveals that they are actually Jesus, that we won't look up to find Jesus sitting in a pew next to us saying, peace be with you. Then again, maybe we will. Who knows? Maybe you believe, maybe you need more proof, but no matter where you are on the spectrum of belief on any given day, no matter how strong your faith or how strong your fear, Jesus is here for and with each and every one of us, always, no matter what. Amen. Our hymn of response this morning is number 306, Fairest Lord Jesus. Join me in our unison affirmation of faith, taken from the Romans 8, verse 1, 28, 38, and 39. 
We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. We are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So now is when we have a chance to uh, share our joys, our concerns, our joy concerns, those things that might be a little bit of both, with our faith community. And just as a reminder, that you can always send things to me earlier in the week, and I can share them for you. And for those worshiping at home, you can do that as well. Um, anything, anyone have anything they want to share today? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Amelia is sharing that she was in a situation where she had to look for an apartment kind of quickly. <laughs> and she found one. So she will be moving on the 25th. And God is good. Yes. Two joys. All the details down so I can remember. All right, so two joys from Beth this morning. Today is her youngest granddaughter's birthday. And also, if you live in Augusta, Georgia, you are hoping for a Tiger Woods sighting, and Lydia saw him. So. <laughs> I write that down because that was a beautiful sentiment. Many things to do. Make your hearts. So Cheryl has a joy that she, as we all know, she retired last August. She had no time to pursue hobbies or anything for her. Um, so uh, she's glad to find out that there is so much to do in this area and that she's been able to find many things that make her heart sing. Yes. Okay. Yes, Karen. Yeah. So. Anyone else uh, singing M&M's? Guess who's back? Back again. No, just me. <laughs> Welcome back, Jim. We're glad you're here with us today. <laughs> yes, Diana. Yeah. 
<laughs> we have no more joy to share. Uh, so just a joy for our flowers. This is probably going to be the last Sunday. So if you would like to take a lily or something home, please do. Um, we're very grateful, lilies, for the joy that you brought us these last few weeks. Yeah, or plant them around the church. Let's see, I'm going to take one of these into the office. So as we think on these things that were spoken out loud, <clears throat> as well as the things that may still be on our minds or in our hearts, let us enter into a time of prayer. God of abundant grace, we gather today, just as your first disciples gathered in the wake of the resurrection, in joy, wonder, and disbelief. We remember that whenever we gather in your name, you appear in our midst, offering us the comfort of your presence and the assurance of your love. And we give you thanks that like those first disciples, you give us a community to practice our faith. Grant us grace to hold space for one another's doubts and questions. Give us courage to admit that we do not have all the answers. Make this community where we explore what it means to receive your forgiveness and dedicate our lives to you. We remember that when the risen Christ first appeared to his disciples, he offered them peace. Our world is deeply in need of your peace, O oh God. A peace that is not only the absence of conflict, but the presence of wholeness for all people. We pray for innocent victims of war in Ukraine and Gaza and around the world. Put an end to violence, Lord. Teach us to recognize our shared humanity, our shared status as your beloved children, each of us created in your image. Lead each of us to prioritize peace, both in our homes and communities and in the wider world. We pray for all who sit in seats of power, fill their hearts with compassion and their decisions with wisdom that all may have the chance to not only survive, but to flourish. Most of all, God, save us from despair. Open our eyes to see the signs of resurrection life that are all around us. Plant hope within us and help us to nurture its tender shoots that it may grow more robust each day. May we begin to imagine the future of your shalom. Loving Lord, we pray for members of our community who need your care. Ease the suffering of the sick and speed the healing of those in recovery. Comfort all those who mourn and bring rest to all who are worn down. Surround the isolated with love and soothe the troubled minds of the anxious. Lord of life, remind us of our call to love one another as you have loved us, with a love that casts out fear and creates community. Grant us energy to serve one another with humility and hope. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes again and all things are made new. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. response to God's abundant grace at work in our lives, let us present with gratitude our gifts of time, talent, and treasure for the building up of God's kingdom.
our unison prayer of dedication. Living Lord, we give you thanks for the bounty of your grace. You create us in your image. Shower us with your love. Forgive us when we turn away from you and give us a future with hope. Bless these gifts we offer you today and make us good stewards of the resources you have entrusted to us. May our gifts bring joy and peace in our church and in our community. In Christ's holy name, we pray. Amen. Our communion hymn, our communion hymn is number 521. You satisfy the hungry, you satisfy the hungry heart, verses two and three. be seated. And I'm 99.9% .9 sure today that my liturgy and your liturgy is the same. Friends, this is the Lord's table. Nobody is turned away from this table. All, all are truly welcome here today. You do not need to be a member of this church or any church to partake with us. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. You created the world and called it good and made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us, and even when we turned from you, you remained ever faithful. Therefore, with all creation, we sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Thank you, O God, for sending us your Son. He lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death then rose to new life that we might live and all creation be restored. 
We remember with thanksgiving our Lord's Passover meal shared with his closest of friends in which he took the bread and blessed it, broke it open and gave it to them saying, this is my body. Take and eat it, remembering me. We remember how he took a cup saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it, all of you, and remember me. Remember in your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break bread and share the cup, giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ and that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and with one another until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we, many as we are, are one body, for it is one loaf of which we partake. When we break the bread, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? When we give thanks over the cup, Is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
the body of Christ offered up for you. We do offer both wine and juice. The wine is the lighter color on the center. The juice is the darker color along the outside. the cup of life offered for you. Let us pray. Holy and eternal God, you are as far away as the distant stars and as close as our breath. You meet us at this table and we discover our hearts burning within us. Go with us as we leave this place so that your light and your life may shine brightly for all to see. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is from your glory to God hymnal, the purple one, number 231, Christ has risen while earth slumbers, verses 1 and 2.
as you go out from this place, remember that Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, you are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. Together we are the resurrected body of Christ in the world, and wherever we go, however we live into that call, the risen Christ will be with us. God's love will surround us, and the Spirit will breathe new life into our weary souls. Amen.